Digital meteorologist Bobby Corser with you here in the Storm Tracker 2 Weather Center. Want to talk a little bit about the difference between an atmospheric river and a cold front. They are tied into each other. You do have cold fronts that tap into the tropical moisture, which is more the southern side of the cold front, and that is part of the atmospheric river. But by nature, we'll explain the difference between a cold front and an atmospheric river. This is your setup as we go through Friday and into Saturday here in the Pacific Northwest. You're going to have this area. Uh, it's a narrow band of heavy moisture. It's pointed kind of like a fire hose at one specific spot. That spot can move north and south. Think of it as like a pencil. It's pencil point where it moves north and south. Everything's kind of focused in just that little area. With a cold front, you're still going to have rain. It's going to be more of a broad area. So you're moving from west to east, expecting a little bit, lot more area, but less intensity. The heavy precip will hit the Oregon coast on Friday and then move into Willamette Valley. Here's your setup. Why do we see these atmospheric river events happen? Pacific Ocean is warm water that rises in the atmosphere that gets channeled into a very narrow stream, and that stream starts to help push it to land. We will see that, like I said, on Friday. First, it hits the coast, the coast range, the Willamette Valley, and the Cascades. You're going to see a very narrow area of rain and wind will be associated with this, focused on kind of one area as it eventually moves through the region on Friday morning. You're going to get some uplifting on the Cascades. That will eventually turn to snow on Saturday. But we could see rainfall amounts in the Coast Range and the Cascades on Friday, basically 2 to 4 inches and maybe 1 to 2 inches in the Willamette Valley throughout the course of the weekend. One thing that we do worry about when we see atmospheric river events are landslides. The rain falls on top of the subsurface. And this is where you have your roots, rocks, uh, trees like that, and it gets saturated. All that weight wants to flow downhill. It's gravity pulling all of this. Once you get that ground saturated and all this weight on top of it, it's going to slide. Thankfully, we have been dry. We are in a moderate drought in the Willamette Valley and the Cascades. Actually, all of Oregon and Washington is under some type of drought advisory right now, according to the last drought monitor map that was released a few days ago. So we don't think that we're going to see a lot of landslides, but had we been completely saturated and it's been raining for days and another one of these events come up, something we do watch out about. We also watch out when we have wildfires. Luckily, this season wasn't too bad here in the Pacific Northwest, but same type of principle. You burn out all that vegetation, uh, so your soil is gone. There's nothing to hold. No roots of plants are available to hold it. You get all this water on top of it, saturates it, and again, gravity pulls it down, and unfortunately... It has to go somewhere, and that's downhill. We saw that earlier this month, actually, down near the Palisades Fire in Los Angeles, where they were really worried about debris flows and landslides because vegetation still has not kind of regrown in that area. So that's what an atmospheric river is. Let's take a look at what a cold front is. It's basically, by definition, a divider between warm air and cold air. And the reason why the cold front is called a cold front is that cold air is advancing. This is the surface map right now across the central United States. We have an area of really cold air moving south out of the Dakotas, down through Kansas and into Oklahoma. Put the map into motion here. And you can see uh, there's an area of low pressure uh, over Wyoming and Colorado. Again, low pressure is associated with wet conditions, storms, showers, rain but it generally moves out pretty quick. Again, the cold front is more just a boundary layer. You're dividing warm air and cold air. Atmospheric rivers usually tap in to the more southern side of a cold front, especially in the Pacific Northwest. That upper level low is helping kind of steer that very thin area of intense uh, precipitation into a region. So cold fronts, again, help kind of control where ARs go, but they are, by definition, different. Cold fronts are, again, the boundary layer, and, you know, we talk about snow this weekend in the Cascades. Once the atmospheric river kind of moves out of our region, cold air will come rushing in behind it. That's why we're going to get the snow levels falling to about 4,500 feet, and we're going to see heavy snow at Willamette and Santee Ann Pass. Maybe a wet snow shower or two up at Government Camp, but we're going to see some snowfall in the Cascades. Hope that helps kind of explain the difference between an atmospheric river and a cold front. I know it's very confusing. But we want you to be aware that it is different than just a standard run-of-the-mill cold front that we see all the time here in the Pacific Northwest.